Fancy meeting you here, Captain. We, the appointed representatives of the Crimson Corporation, merely come to obtain the fair and reasonable payment for our goods. We traveled to this region of space years ago to sell the useless Ultron device to the Ookwing. We knew even then of the weapon on the surface below us. This was to be our price. But the Ookwing used a clever ploy to cheat us. I had convinced the morose Ookwing fools that the Ultron was the answer to all of their pitiful dreams. Powers? The Proctor's wine. Will it give us the powers we crave? I assured them that, yes, the Ultron would give them the second sight. The Ultron would allow them to see into the past and the future. The Ultron would slowly imbue each of them with unique secret powers of great significance. The Ultron would ensure that their race's huge potential for greatness would be fulfilled. Then, then a mistake was made. Enough foolishness. We will take the precursor device from the surface, and then leave. Thereafter, I may see fit to bequeath the entire planet to you, Captain, for your invaluable services in the past. Provided you need them. Liar! It is we who are the genuine owners, not you, Captain. Those many years ago, when we offered the Ultron to the Ukwe, how they capered and laughed at their good fortune. Fools. Then they begged to hold the device, just for a moment. To close the deal, I permitted this. A grievous mistake. The moment the High Prompter touched the Ultron, her body arched and her eyes rolled back in her head. She began to babble meaningless phrases and howl like a beast. We had expected the Ukwik to fall for our cell, to buy the useless device, but never with such gusto. Their self-doubt and lack of clear reason left them vulnerable to our every manipulation. But then, the Proctor's body relaxed, and her eyes slowly closed. When they reopened, her visual orbs shone with a wild and frightening light. This is all we could have dreamed of, and more, she intoned. And now, Drew, as to your price. I opened my mouth to speak. But before I could utter a word, the Proctor interrupted. Wait! The Ultron feeds your thoughts directly to me. Do not speak. I know that you desire. What could I say? That the Ultron was a farce and could do no such thing? I was stunned and sight. The Proctor continued. You truths of the Crimson Corporation desire an object of great antiquity. Something of secret function and value. Very well. It shall be done. And with that, we were led to a small vault. The Proctor ceremoniously opened the door of the vault and explained that because we had been of such great service, all of the treasures within were now ours. Inside, we found a hodgepodge of ancient and useless artifacts, a glowing rod, an absurd trident, and more such junk. I could see no way to salvage the disastrous situation at that time. But, when I heard of you, your travels, and your foolish quest for freedom, I realized that you could be the agent of our justice. And lo, it is so. You have heard our justification. It is valid and unassailable. Now, go, and do not return! No, you will not! We know your soul, young captain. It is no brighter than ours. 
We acknowledge our greed. We revel in it. You are the dishonest one, hiding your shame and shadows. You fabricate justifications, rationales. In the end, we are just the same. But now you stand in our way. You will not be moved. Therefore, we will add your true name to our ledger of hatred. But first, die, child, die! 